double check because it's actually been years since I've made a video about Aftershoot uh, and a lot has changed since then. Uh, it's been kind of incredible to watch uh, the company grow from just a simple window that you would drag images into to a um, nearly like fully fledged self-contained editing and culling suite, uh, leveraging AI technology. Uh, Aftershoot has come such a long way and they've been on my mind a lot recently uh, because they invited me to come out and teach a bunch of photographers in the middle of Peru uh, just a couple weeks ago. And though I was there to just teach mostly about technique and you know process behind photography, nothing really from my side specifically to do with Aftershoot, of course, being around so many people that work for the company and a lot of the students, most of whom use the uh, software regularly really made me realize just how much has changed in the app and that it's probably worth uh, looking into again. I'm also ramping up into like the busiest time of my year. One of the two busier times, fall is actually the crazy, crazy time. Uh, so I'm editing a lot and calling a ton. Uh, so I'm leveraging Aftershoot all the time. And again, I can't believe it's been this long since I've made a video about Aftershoot. It feels like I talk about them every day because I use their product constantly. <laughs> uh, it's one of my go-to resources in my workflow. And they made a lot of fantastic refinements, especially with a uh, more recent update. I believe they're just labeling it like Aftershoot Edits 2.0. Uh, and it's not just about the editing uh, side of things, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's also just about kind of reorganizing the entire process of how everything works. And now when you jump into the app and you add a folder or you're just getting started with your entire collection, these nice, these clearly organized import, call, and edit tabs that make it very easy for you to kind of visualize where you are in your entire process. Now, I still use Aftershoot a bit differently than what you know they've designed the app for, and I'll talk about my entire workflow uh, in a minute. But Aftershoot has, has primarily designed it so that once you run all your images through the AI detection uh, for calling out the, the good, you know, select photos that aren't blurry or don't have any, you know, uh, duplicates and stuff like that, Aftershoot has really worked hard to design it so that photographers can make, make changes to the AI selections right in the app with very, very fast render times. You really don't have to wait for any previews to load or anything like that. Uh, but the way I do it, I still just wait for it to color code everything. Uh, in, in this example, you can see these are chosen with a green color. That means green is good. Uh, that means it's selected as a potential you know photo to edit and deliver. Um, that's all I sync. It's really easy to do. So yeah, let's just jump into my workflow right away. Uh, you know, I'm not going to over explain and justify why I do things uh, the way that I do, but it just absolutely works for me. Hopefully it gives you some, some new approaches to think about. Once you select your folder of images, this is the same wedding that I've got here in Lightroom. This is from May uh, 26th. Uh, you select call and I've already, and this has already been called, so I'm just gonna say restart calling and clear the existing cache. Uh, you choose the type of shoot. Of course, this is a wedding slash engagement, automated AI call. So here's where you have a decision to make in terms of how much time you wanna save versus how much control. It's always gonna be sort of a trade-off uh, of those two things. I like to use the automated AI call option with standard. That gives me a little less than 50% of the photos that I manually will look at. With this wedding, I shot 7,000 images. I, it'll probably AI select about 2,500 or so for me to look at. So yeah, that's way better than having to look at all 7,000 images. Uh, but that is gonna vary uh, depending on how many duplicate shots there are versus individual, you know, really distinctly different photos. It's, it's always sort of a range. Uh, but yeah, I keep mine right here at standard. And then here's how I have my colors and stars uh, customized. It's very straightforward. Anything that's a selection is labeled green. Anything that could be like a highlight is also labeled green. I don't use the highlight feature for anything. It's kind of cool, but we're not gonna get into that. Duplicate. It's just no label, blur, no label, closed eyes, no label. And then stars, I use for a completely different uh, category in my workflow. All the stars are related to what I show in my portfolio, blog, or social media. So this really doesn't have that much um, to do with what I need out of Aftershoot right now. So I make sure, uh, because I manually star my favorite images, I make sure and turn off overwrite existing uh, stars and colors because I don't want it to overwrite the work I did um, already if I shared something on social media, which I usually do, you know, just a few days after most weddings. Okay, next, here we go, start calling. 
So the big advantage to Aftershoot has always been that everything is done locally on your machine. So some of the speed and, and performance you're going to experience, uh, at least in this part of the process, is going to be dependent on you know, how powerful your actual laptop is. I'm using a completely maxed out um, Apple M3 Max <laughs> uh, MacBook Pro, the 14 inch, uh, which I highly recommend and love. But yeah, this call really shouldn't take more than, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. That'll give me a little time estimate in a moment, seven and a half minutes. So I'm gonna edit the video here and we'll jump back in after it's finished the selection process. Okay, that took about 10 minutes and Aftershoot has selected for me 2,364 images. Again, every, every selected photo is just labeled with the simple color green. So at this stage, you can go through and do a color swap and, and make adjustments to the selection if you want, uh, or you can hit export photos, but you don't actually even have to do that. I can go right back into my Lightroom catalog, so, uh, command A to select all the images uh, that are in that folder, right click on any image that's selected, go down to metadata and then read metadata from files. So metadata is just like the sidecar text file that gets attached to every single raw file that you have. You can see now um, the green uh, selections are starting to populate. All Aftershoot is doing is writing that color flag into the text file metadata that then Lightroom can read and uh, it basically just carry over that color label uh, without having to do anything. It's pretty great. Uh, it takes, you know, maybe about a minute to sync 7,000 images, uh, which isn't bad at all. Uh, and then at this stage, personally, I sort by the green label. And that's where this tool is very, very fun little remote controller. I think it's like seven bucks on Amazon. It's called the 8-Bit Do. That's where this comes into play for me. Now, most of you have probably seen somebody, if not me from years ago, somebody else talk about how you can use Bluetooth to sync game controllers to control your computer. That's exactly what this is doing. This is just a cheap little game controller. The big difference since like 2019 or whatever, when I first talked about using the game controller uh, is that if you have an M, chip, the Apple Silicon chip in your computer, you need to use um, a different app than what I previously recommended. The new app is called Joy Mapper Silicon. And it's just updated coding and optimization, I, I guess. Uh, it's the only one that I could find that would work for Apple's new Silicon, which I highly recommend. If you're still on Intel chips, switch over as <laughs> quickly as you can. Uh, but yeah, you can just customize each button to map to a particular keyboard uh, shortcut. So in this case, the A key moves to the next image. Uh, basically all I do at this stage is sit with my little controller and go through all of the aftershoot selected images and flag what I want to edit. And uh, any, for my workflow, anything that's flagged ultimately gets uploaded to the client gallery. And at this stage, you know, it's 2,300 images. I'm gonna try and get that down to about 800. And I quickly will just kind of go through, I'm not trying to overthink it, just roughly, you know, not choose any obviously boring or awful pictures. Uh, sometimes after shoot will include ones that you're like, why? And it's because it tries to, usually if there's duplicates, if they're all bad, it'll still try and pick one from that series. So that way, you know, maybe a creative idea where eyes are meant to be closed on purpose or you're doing motion blur on purpose, you know, a creative idea like that isn't totally left out and you can decide uh, still whether you want to use it or not. At this stage, I use my little controller. I sit back and just try and go through and flag all the images I think I'm gonna send through after shoots editing. At this stage, again, I'm very, very lenient about what I'm selecting. And once everything is edited, that's when I'll go back through, tighten up the editing a little bit. And at that stage, I'll start to call out. So after this initial pass, you know, just trying to choose as much as I can. From then on, I'm working on just calling out as much as possible. Uh, one special button, I have the B button set, is to turn off all labels. So say I get to a section where I, I just feel like I remember I shot something better than what it's showing me. Or maybe there's just a really important moment that I want to make sure and include a few more variations than what Aftershoot gave me. This B button just turns off all the filters so I can quickly jump out and see everything else uh, that Aftershoot decided not to include. I can flag if I want from there, uh, go back to green and then turn the, the filters back on and be right back in action. So that is a constant thing I'm using. I'm jumping, you know, punching in to see all the images and punching back out to just see the, the best selects from what Aftershoot chose. And, you know, it's just a feeling thing about when I need to look and when I don't. 
uh, yeah, you develop that sensibility over time the more you use Aftershoot and uh, kind of get a sense of where it's going to fall short and where it's going to just be totally uh, reliable. Um, just as a side note, uh, your Lightroom should be instantaneously responsive. Even if you do have an older Intel uh, machine, it really is possible to get Lightroom to react exactly this fast all the time, no matter what. The trade-off is you need to wait for certain previews to render, and I've got older posts that talk about how to set up your Lightroom catalog for, for optimization. I highly recommend you look into that. There should never be any loading or delay uh, unless you zoom in on an image. Even then, it should be very minimal. You do all your calling in library mode and then all your editing in develop mode. Uh, again, as soon as I hit the button here, there's no lag. It is instantaneously showing me the, the next photo. Photo, no problem. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend this entire video calling this entire wedding right now. I'm just gonna talk about my next part of my workflow. So once I have tightened up my call, uh, again, I use the flag filter for that. Now we need to get these images back into Aftershoot uh, for the editing portion. So I'm gonna jump back in and go to new album, Lightroom catalog, edits only. So this is 526, 2024. I'm gonna go down here and find it. There it is. Uh, so that's selected, apply filters. So I'm just gonna have edit everything that's flagged. And again, because I punch in and look at all photos sometimes, I'm not gonna bother labeling uh, green, red, or anything like that, because some might be flagged that don't have a color uh, just because I manually decided that's what I really wanted to use. Apply filters, okay. So it's selected all the images that I uh, manually flagged here in this example. Uh, a few things here on the right side. Now is the time you get to choose your AI color profile. So this is something you can train yourself or use uh, something from their marketplace, which has sort of a baseline starting point of pre-trained models for editing that you can use from. Uh, I definitely have my own uh, made. I trained it on, I think, about 70,000 uh, images, raw files that, yeah, I, you know, at one point I had manually edited from years ago. Camera profile, I use a really special profile called Bit Depth, and I that's just a separate topic entirely. But down here, you'll be able to choose whatever your favorite profile uh, normally is. That's, I'm guessing for most people, that's Adobe standard or maybe camera standard. Uh, and then AI cropping, I don't really use that at all. Uh, I need to do some more testing to see how good it really is, but I do use the AI straightening all the time. It's very noticeable to me when I forget to use it. Uh, it's very, very helpful as a feature. Um, so AI straightening on, AI masking, I also turn that on. And adjust non-AI sliders from your preset, yes, I also turn that on. Even though uh, the way my preset works, it's not necessarily uh, necessary. And that's it. Let's hit edit 33 pictures. Again, just like with calling, the editing side is done locally to your machine. So no internet connection required. And the speed that it's able to you know, finish everything is gonna be a little bit dependent on the power of your machine. But it's very, very efficient. You don't need that much power to get a reasonable turnaround time. I would say maybe it's 15 to 20 minutes for a full 700, 800 photo wedding on this machine. Everything's there. Now, if you open up your editing results in Lightroom and see that there's a consistent tweak that you're making. Maybe it's consistently a little too bright or a little too dark or a little blue or whatever. Uh, you can adjust and create basically an offset here of your profile. Just say adjust profile and then run through the, the editing again. Uh, let's take a look at what it did to these 33 images. Wonderful, okay. So uh, normally before I actually start reviewing them, I select all again, go to library previews, build standard size previews. So that way everything is gonna be responsive and fast because I do all my reviewing and, and tweaking of the edits in Lightroom directly. And at this stage, I use another piece of software called Better Touch Tool, which I will enable now, that is a totally separate video, again, that I'll link in the description about how to set up that, that allows me to just have keyboard shortcuts pre-mapped to uh, where my mouse is on the screen. But to be honest, my, my most common edit after getting things to this stage is just the next button or unflag. Uh, this is where I start to call out if I get a sense that I've over, you know, over included a few particular moments. Uh, my other most common edit at this stage is a shortcut to just convert to black and white. Again, if I have too many duplicate pictures or it's just a really powerful moment where I feel like the color is distracting, just, you know, some gut instinctual feeling, uh, yeah, that I will uh, command to 
just enables my uh, black and white preset. And you know, probably about 10 or 15% of my entire gallery is black and white at the end of the day. So that's where I'm at right now with using Aftershoot for calling and editing. It does a fantastic job at both. I still, there's plenty of, uh, you know, my unique fingerprint in every layer of the process. It's just doing what I would have manually had to do anyway. It's really wonderful. They give you so much control in training your own editing profile and let you adjust it later on as your preferences change or as maybe their algorithm gets tweaked and things kind of ebb and flow, you can keep up with it so that your look still evolves and you're not like locked in to something uh, from a couple years ago. You know, as time goes on, uh, everybody's look and preferences change. That's all I wanted to go over, just a quick little update. And again, I'll link to some of the other videos if you're curious about specifically setting up a little game controller for calling, which I highly, highly recommend, or setting up something like Better Touch Tool, which I also highly recommend for keyboard uh, editing, or uh, setting up your Lightroom catalog to be super, super fast and responsive. Those are all worth their own views. So that's where I'm at. I'm very grateful to After shoot for having me out to Peru a couple weeks ago. That was a wonderful trip and just a great demonstration of the company's sort of mindset of just wanting to not only be a valuable tool for, for photographers, but also investing back into the photography education space, even if it's for topics or events that have nothing to do with, you know, what Aftershoot does in an app. It's just uh, wonderful to see that. So as always, thank you so much for your attention. I'll be back soon with more and yeah, have a good day. Bye everyone.